Today we'll be doing map projections with Ephron, Nate, Brett, Taya, and Daniel. Did you know that it's impossible to flatten out a sphere? Take this here beach ball for an example. If you inflate it to a sphere, then try to flatten it out, you'll notice that the sphere can't stay completely flat. This interesting property explains why there's so many different types of maps of Earth. Before we show these different maps, we'll highlight how misleading certain types of maps can be. We asked random UMass students which landmass was bigger, Africa or Greenland. Hey Rufage, which yep. one do you think is bigger? Africa or Greenland? Green. Greenland? Yep. Cool. So you trust maps then, right? Uh, kind of. Well, can you I tell me again which one do you think is bigger? Africa or Greenland? Still green. Spring, still Greenland? Yep. Okay, interesting. Hi Ryan, um, which one do you think is bigger? Greenland or Africa? Uh, from the way the map looks, Greenland. Greenland? Okay. Which one do you think is bigger, Greenland or Africa? Well, from the way this map looks, it looks like Africa. Are you saying maps are lying to you, Ryan? I think so. Right, right on. Africa. Jonah, um, so I have a question for you. Which one do you think is bigger, Greenland or Africa? Oh, Greenland, right? No, Africa. 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 You think Africa's yeah, bigger? Yeah, it's just the map so, is like... So you don't trust this map then, yeah. right? So let me ask you one more time. Which one do you think is bigger, Greenland yeah, or Africa? Definitely Africa. That's kind of weird how there's two different maps that show two different things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much what we wanted to show you. As the interview showed, different maps can convey different meanings. Here are some map projections and the properties of Earth they represent. This is the Mercator projection. It preserves angles between coastlines, which is great for navigation, but it distorts land area, so it's off for comparing how one land mass compares to another one. This is the Gall-Peters map. It preserves relative area, but it's bad for navigation. So this is the sinusoidal map. It's um, better for area preservation mm -hmm. than compared to the Gulls peter but it's also bad for traveling purposes. This is the Damaxian map. It preserves continent continuity and relative area, but it, by its shape it is not good for exploration. This explains why there are different types of maps that represent different properties of the globe. Now, here's Brett and Nate with the mathematics behind why you can't perfectly project a sphere onto a 2D plane without distortion. Okay, we've already discussed that maps can be deceiving and that it's impossible to flatten out a sphere onto a 2D surface. To get a better understanding of why maps are deceiving, we have to look at spherical geometry. So to begin, we have the spherical coordinate system. Now, we have our standard Cartesian axes, x, y, and z. Rho is the radius of the sphere, and then phi is the reference angle from the positive z-axis. Phi ranges from 0 to pi. And then we have theta in the xy plane ranging from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So when we take a sphere and look at the surface, we can create a spherical rectangle. Now, this part of the spherical rectangle is denoted by rho sine phi d theta and this change in the spherical rectangle is denoted by rho d phi. When you multiply these two components together you get an area of rho squared sine phi d phi d theta. When you look at a typical rectangle you just have changes of dx and dy, or dy dz, or dx dz, all depending on which plane you're in. So, typically, you end up with a distortion factor such that rho squared sine phi d phi d theta equals dx dy. One of the most common methods of map projection is called cylindrical projection, and there are a few variances in cylindrical projection. This map is called the McCarter map projection, and it is one of the most common maps seen in the real world. Uh, because of the way it's made, it is very good for navigation, as it preserves angles and distances between coastlines. So the way the McCarter projection is made is if you have a sphere inside of a cylinder, 
and you project orthogonally off the sphere onto the cylinder, and then unwrap the cylinder, you end up with this projection. Another way to think about this is if you have the sphere in the cylinder and inflate it like a balloon until all points on the sphere are in contact with the surface of the cylinder. With this map, you get a lot of distortion in the polar regions because of how it's projected onto the cylinder. And you also have distortion side to side because as you move away from the equator on a sphere, the circumference at that relative height is much less than it is at the equator. With this projection, area is preserved in a much better way, but shape is distorted. This is the Gall-Peters projection, and what it does is takes the sphere inside of the cylinder and goes straight out to the cylinder. So you see less distortion vertically, but you still have horizontal distortion in the regions further from the equator. And if you notice, you do have some shape distortion, but area is represented much better. Uh, in this example, you can see that Greenland is a much more appropriate size compared to Africa, the same being true for Australia and Alaska. Alright, so in an effort to preserve both the land area and the distortion near the poles to help explorers travel, we just simply add more cylindrical pieces to cover the sphere, as you can see in this photo as well, and the area or the height of the actual cylinder itself will dictate how precise the measurement can actually become. For the actual circumference of each of the cylinders, we reference 2 pi rho sine phi. In this, we can see that if we take the limit as h goes to zero, we will get a lot more precise land area preservation and distortion in the poles, simply becoming what is now the sinusoidal graph. Another interesting type of map projection involves the icosahedron. The icosahedron is a platonic solid with 20 faces, all of them being triangles. And when you project a sphere onto an icosahedron, you're able to maintain coastlines and relative distances but also provide accurate area because there are a lot more faces that you're projecting onto. One of the common projections seen with icosahedral projection looks like this. A problem that Buckminster Fuller had with this projection is that it breaks up pieces of continents, specifically Antarctica, Asia, Europe, and part of North America. So, in an attempt to rectify this, he came up with the Dymaxian map. Now, this map has cut a few of the triangular faces of the icosahedron and put them in other places to preserve the shapes of all the continents, but he also unwrapped it with the North Pole in the center to get rid of a North-South paradigm of viewing maps. So as you can see, the Eastern Hemisphere is here, the Western Hemisphere is here, and North-South actually is determined from starting in the center and moving out. This map preserves area and also preserves distance, but because it's displayed on an icosahedral net, it isn't very popular.